Canon just released five firmware updates. Is it for the Canon EOS R5, the EOS R6, the R6 Mark II, or even the Canon EOS R3? Well, the firmware update is for the Canon RF 100 to 300 mm F2.8 L series USM, getting firmware 1.0.6. The RF 800mm f5.6 and the 1200mm f8, well, they're both getting firmware version 1.04. And the Canon RF 400mm f2.8 and the 600mm f4 are both getting firmware versions 1.0.6. So what's in these big firmware updates? What are we getting? What goodies are we getting? Well, let's start off with the 100 to 300mm f2.8 because it gets an extra update that the other lenses don't get. So when you're operating the 100 to 300 millimeter and you're doing those fast zoom operations, the good news is it's now easier to focus. And again, this is only for the 100 to 300. And the other update? Well, when you're shooting with the electronic shutter system, the control of panning assist after the second shot when you're shooting continuous, well, it's been improved. All lenses, including the 100 to 300, get this update. Now, hold off, don't end this video at this point because I've got a really important message to tell you. If you're thinking of downloading these updates and applying them to your lenses, all of these lenses, which are quite expensive, I would recommend holding off for at least a week because it, it's rare that this happens, but sometimes when you apply a firmware update, it can actually brick the camera or even the lens and cause you introduce other problems that can cause you other headaches. And if you think I'm being a little bit over dramatic here just for clicks and view purposes, I'm not. If you recall back to the Canon EOS R6, I believe it was firmware 1.0.0, it was immediately pulled because it actually bricked the camera. And then we got firmware 1.3.1. And just recently with Sony, if you think this was isolated to just Canon, Sony just recently pulled the firmware update for the Sony Alpha 1. That's right, that big firmware update for version 2.0. And the last thing you want to do is to introduce issues into your shooting that can impact your workflow and produce the value or impact the value that you produce on a regular basis. So my, my recommendation is wait a week and if you don't hear anything in the news, you don't hear anything on this channel, then it's safe to go ahead and do the update. Now I might not do a video depending on what issue might come out. If it's a minor issue, I might just tweet it out. So make sure you follow me on X and not just subscribe to this channel. One of the things I did in preparation for this video, I checked to see if there were any big sales on for these lenses because even the most cheapest one is around $10,000. And well, they can go incredibly, well, the, the price can increase incredibly steeply after that, incredibly steeply. That's bad English. I know it's early in the morning here. Uh, prices really, uh, let me try this again. What's a better way to say that? Prices go up steadily. Prices, prices, this is sometimes what happens when you're under the glares of lights and a lens, you just, the words just aren't coming to you. Well. It, Let's take a look at the 1200 millimeter, for example. Look at the price of this thing. This is not affordable to you. Well, maybe it is, um, but it's certainly not affordable to me and most people that like shooting with super telephoto lenses. I mean, I do spend a little bit of money on telephoto lenses. I have the 100 to 500 over here, and I just recently purchased the 200 to 800 millimeter. But there is one lens I would really like to get, and that's the 100 to 300 millimeter, but at around $9,500. It's just a little bit too far out of my reach. And yes, I know Nikkor has a really affordable lens, the 800 millimeter F6.3 at about $6,500, which is much more affordable. But the purpose of this segment that I'm trying to transition to in right now is I was looking for deals. I like to do a deals of the week and I covered that off yesterday talking about, if I talked about the R5, $29.99 and there's different kit packages available. At Adorama, you can get a 128 gigabyte CF Express card and all that wonderful stuff. I love telling you about this. And um, there's absolutely no sales on anything Super Telephoto and the 200 to 800, you can't even get it right now. Since it was announced back in November and started shipping in December, December the 14th, People haven't been receiving them. Maybe one or two of them is going out a week. So I understand your frustrations. There's no deals, no sales on right now. But I want to say a special thanks to everybody that has used my affiliate links to purchase camera gear, including the Nikkor 800 millimeter. Somebody just purchased that a few days ago using my links down below. A big thanks to you because um, I get anywhere from two to 12% back, which goes right back to supporting this channel, helping me purchase lenses like the 200 to 800. 
the 100 to 500 and the upcoming Canon EOS R5 Mark II. So a big thanks to everybody. Those of you that bought the R5, that bought the Nikkor 800mm f6.3. Uh, that's one lens I would love to get. I would also, but the one lens I really want to get is the 100 to 300 millimeter. I know it, it's expensive, but hold on a minute here. Let me let me give you an idea as to why this lens is so expensive and why you might at least want to try it out one day. It's an f 2.8, so 100 to 300 millimeter f 2.8. Why is that such a big deal? Well, imagine you're a sports photographer or you're covering the Olympics or you're covering other sort of fast action type subjects. Now you're outdoors, but it's raining, it's cloudy, it's really heavily overcast and you're shooting uh, football, for example. Now imagine it's just teeming down. You've got your umbrella, well, not your umbrella, you've got your raincoat over yourself and over your camera and you've got it at f2.8. You've got the shutter set at one two thousandths of a second and you're able to nail the shots, get incredible shots without any blur, and you've got the sharpness without any noise. And that's one of the powerful things about this lens. And if you're indoors, there's a lot of times where you're shooting equestrian type stuff, or you're shooting Olympics, and the lighting there isn't all that great. And that's where a 100 to 300 millimeter comes in, and it's super fast. Now, for the rest of us, yeah, it's a little bit unaffordable, unless you're doing that stuff that can warrant the price of, well, $9,500 plus tax, it can take you over to over $10,000 depending on where you are. But the, the, the level of engineering to go into a lens like that, that's got a limited market pushes the price up. So the engineering pushes the price up. And then when they realize it's only for a very limited segment, that jacks up the price even more. Despite the beautiful engineering of that lens, I, I don't think I'll be able to afford that for maybe another three to four years. And then, and then only, if it goes on sale. But I want to say a special thanks to you watching, watching right to the very end, watching the entire video, for commenting, for liking, for subscribing and following me on X. But also for those of you, again, that uh, use my affiliate links down below, these guys right here, thank you so much because this channel would not be where it is today. I mean, just look at the number of subscribers, 51,000 subscribers, and look at the gear I'm able to work with. These aren't on loan. These aren't borrowed. Everything I have on this in this studio and everything I have in my Studio B upstairs is purchased through revenue from YouTube, through revenue from the affiliate link. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. It is you. This is very much a community that's allowed me to grow this business to where it is today. Thank you so much. Have yourself a great day, a great week. Spring is in the air. I'm really excited. I was out shooting again yesterday. I've got a new gimbal here, the Crane 4, which I am putting the fine, <laughs> see, I can't speak again, putting the finishing touches on the review. Uh, this should probably be coming out towards the later end of this week, or maybe even on the weekend. I don't know if I'll do a Saturday or Sunday release, or maybe even save it to Monday. Uh, but this is my new favorite um, gimbal. And if you watch that video, you'll understand why. So, uh, and the reason for this is uh, I put out a poll a little while ago asking you guys what I should do more of. If I should remove that intro, it's gone. If I should do more reviews, I'm doing that. I'm working on two right now. And if I should cover more patent application information, and I am, I've got another video coming out soon. So all this, a lot of changes to the channel because it's community-based, because I'm listening to you, I'm listening to your feedback. Um, not necessarily those comments that say, you're an idiot, I hate this channel, you suck, all you are is a Canon fanboy type comments. And no, that's not just one, that's a collection of them. What I'm trying to do and what I've always tried to do here is to build a community where we can come together, where we can discuss the news of the day, where we can discuss camera forecasts, our love of photography and videography, and um, try to produce content that you want to see and not just what I want to see, because there's content definitely that I want to see. Uh, the camera forecasting stuff, the rumor stuff, I really love because I love dreaming of what the future can do in terms of technology. But I also understand that you have certain likes as well. So I try to give everybody a little bit of something. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again soon.